are the Warriors in trouble? I don't know about that one, Cyrus. I think we should talk about it. Is there a panic button that should be pressed yet? I I, uh, I have a button right here, but it doesn't say panic. <laughs> Is Draymond Green going to be okay? Well, I sure should hope so. <laughs> we'll, we'll delve into all of that. And so much more. <laughs> this is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com and use promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. He's Dieter Kurdenbach. I'm Cyrus Sotsis. You can follow him on Twitter at Dieter. You can follow me on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow. Uh, we're recording this on Wednesday morning, January 12th, right after what I guess any Warriors fan could call a bit of a debacle. Um, uh, I guess, what are your takeaways from uh, that Grizzlies game right off the bat? 26 different lineups in that game, Cyrus. 26. On, on average, let me just throw this at you. This is a team that uses their bench as much as any squad in the NBA. This is a team that, that values mixing and matching. And they usually use 18, sometimes 19. Uh, when they go over 20, something terrible has happened. Uh, typically, it's you know massive foul trouble or uh, it's a blowout game uh, in uh-huh. either direction. Uh, 26 different lineups. No lineup played more than eight minutes. My takeaway is this. The Warriors are just trying to figure it out, man. Uh, yeah. I think that we saw Clay Thompson come in on Sunday and he looked awesome and we just said it's over it's done yeah. it probably <laughs> is over and done if we're being real about it because when yeah, this yeah. all works out it will be spectacular but right now they are in deep tinker mode because no Draymond Green you don't have the linchpin of your team and Clay Thompson has 20 minutes and it's going to keep going up that they now have to account for and he's a player who he was fantastic last night in so many areas but he also it's a guy who still looks like he's working off rust two and a half years. Yep. Of course he's rusty. you got to cut the guy some slack. Um, it was just a kind of a hot mess of a game, and the Grizzlies in particular are not a team that you want to play if you're just trying to find your rhythm because their right. whole thing is trying to lure mm-hmm. you into the alley for a fist fight. And John Morant might speed it up and slow it down, but John Morant operates on his own platform, perhaps in the world. Um Everybody else on – I mean, they have a guy who's nicknamed Slow-Mo for a reason. (laughs) Um, They want to slow it down. They want to play the half-court game. They're still spacing, but they're not pacing. And um, it's an excellent excellent basketball team. I really enjoy what they're doing in Memphis. My favorite thing in sports is perhaps when teams really uh, embody the perceived identity of a city or a region that they represent. And certainly we've seen that with the Warriors and sort of innovation and all the stuff that we really like to do out here, idiosyncratic nonsense that every region (laughs) has. Um, And Memphis, right? Like Memphis is a small market. Memphis probably shouldn't Mm -hmm. have an NBA team, though they certainly are. I'm not saying take away the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm saying it was a bit of a coup to get the Memphis Grizzlies in the first place. And uh, (laughs) they're tough and they're rugged and they're from, you know, a Rust Belt town in the South, if that makes any sense. Like, Memphis Memphis is some hard scrabble stuff and that team is hard scrabble and a bunch of underdogs and they play like it and they get up for the Warriors I don't know if it's just Andre Iguodala and his presence that gets them up because they do not like Andre Iguodala there in Memphis but um, they they bring it on, on those nights and Uh, They slowed the game down. They did a really great job in that beautiful conflict that we see on most every night of the Warriors trying to speed it up, the other team trying to slow it down as to beat the Warriors. Memphis did a wonderful job in in playing that game, and that's why there were so many different runs, and it just seemed very disjointed, and it was certainly sloppy from the Warriors at the beginning of the game. Uh, But 26 different lineups, it just kind of tells you where this team's at, and it stinks that this is the time that they have to do it with Milwaukee yeah. and Chicago and, and don't sleep on the Timberwolves coming up. Like this is a crappy road trip to have to figure everything out, but they have to figure everything out. This is a brand new team now with Clay Thompson in the fold and they will figure it out. Uh, it'll probably take until Draymond comes back, but they will figure it out. And when they do, it will be supernova awesome, but they're figuring it out. We're in game number two of a brand new season for the Golden State Warriors. I'm not surprised that it looked this clunky against a great team like the Memphis Grizzlies. 
Yeah, and, and I feel like uh, Draymond's presence uh, or lack of, if it's going to be felt against any team, it's going to be the Grizzlies. Uh, it, he was sorely missed out there. Um, I don't know if you heard the story, by the way. I was on the Locked on Bucks uh, podcast yesterday as a guest. Uh, thank you, okay. Kane, for bringing me on. And he brought up something I didn't know about, which is that, and, and you could have cashed in on this as well. Apparently, yeah. the bookies took a massive hit on uh, oh, Draymond yeah. Green. Yeah. bets before that last game because the only people because i'm guessing people knew about it before the bookies did you yeah. included probably because the only people who knew who were at were at the arena right so. yeah i uh i uh that would have been terribly unethical and i don't do things <laughs> like that um, gambling. But, uh, uh, yeah. i've never no i didn't i didn't i didn't i i that that is kind of like there is the borderline of like can you bet on a team that you cover and uh, I'd be lying to you <laughs> if I said I didn't do that once or twice. Like, I, I, but like, legitimately, it's a pretty rare thing. Like, it has to look like a massive market disadvantage, and that one would have felt really gross. I, I'll say this for anybody: uh, we're, we're in California. Uh, legalized sports betting is not a thing there. Thank goodness we have my bookie. But um, it totally. is. Uh, 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 let me just remind people of this in all of the states that if you have legalized sports gambling and you can do it on your phone, the house will always win. I'll try to give yeah. you great tips. Cyrus can give out great tips. Everybody can have great tips, but the house will always win because the house can change the rules after the fact. And yes. that appears to be the case with the Draymond Green thing. But um, <laughs> because now they're now they're investigating if it was quote a known uh, a known event, which is like are they it, really? Oh yeah, oh yeah. ESPN oh, I didn't know that. Right up on it. Yeah. Um, this is the kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that you think oh you won on, but you're not getting your money. You'll you'll get your ticket uh -huh. back but you're not getting your money. So, um, you know, more power oh. to you. More power to you if you could pull the trigger. If Anthony Slater and Shams report uh, at, at 831 Eastern was able to give you the time to put in a, a <laughs> six a six under parlay for Draymond Green that paid out $100,000, I don't think you're seeing that cash, homie. But you know what, man? That, that's, that's good, fast thinking. I love, you're talking, I love you have all these ethical rules when it comes to gambling. Like, there's any ethics, period, well, in that realm. Well, there, there, there is in my <laughs> other lines of work. Maybe not on, on this one that I, you know, we can pay for this, but, like, maybe not in this one. But uh, I'm pretty sure that would be uh, – let, let me put it to you this way. If I'm going to bet on a team that I cover, if I'm going to bet in general, the last thing that I want is an investigation into that bet. Like, yes. I don't need this to become a no. thing. Uh, if I'm doing it, I need this thing to remain on the 100% <laughs> sly. So appreciate you putting me on the spot there, Cyrus. Really cool. <laughs> and speaking of putting you on the spot, uh, I, I'm sorry for that Alabama money line. That looked oh, like a sure it's thing. Okay. It's okay. I, it's, I felt I felt good about it. The process was strong. Um, so it, it is what it is. And that's, again, oh. that's the beauty of betting. You're probably going to get it wrong more than half the time. If you can get it right, right more than half the time, you're awesome. And then the books will just change the rules on you. So it doesn't really matter. Exactly. Well, and I, and I knew something was shady. The moment the money line went from like plus, I think, 125 to plus 150, I was like, why is it going that way when yeah. Nick Saban's the coach of that? Like, I would not, I don't like betting against Nick Saban. I know we're going off track here, but uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, that was, yeah, this, when it comes to gambling, you're right. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's the Wild West. I, and I, if you, I, I love it. It, but just understand that you're playing a losing game and uh, <laughs> perhaps that's the segue right here because the Warriors are going to play the Bucks on Thursday and if they repeat their performance from Tuesday in Memphis they're going to get spanked I mean full stop they're going to get spanked because Memphis is a good team Milwaukee can be if they have their big three rumble in the way that they can yeah. rumble they if they are a truly great team when they are fully operative and um, I would expect them to be up for that game let me put it to you yeah and this and and the, and they law and the Grizzlies were at a disadvantage as well without Dylan Brooks, but mm -hmm. John Morant. I mean, look, you're you're a Chicago guy. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about these comparisons between John Morant and Derrick Rose? I see it. I, I I don't know if you're agreeing with that. I mean, you follow Derrick Rose probably closer than most. Yeah. I mean, do you, is that a fair comparison to you? I love that comparison, save for you know. <laughs> <laughs> the inherent expiration date of it all. Yeah, yeah. Um, and which that might I, be for I mentioned, I mentioned on KMBR last night, like enjoy the beauty of this John Morant thing because athletes like that, these supernova athletes, and hell, we've already seen it with the guy who's taken one pick before him in Zion Williamson. Like you can't take these guys for granted. You hope that John Morant is able to age beautifully and gracefully into the future, but um, this is a dude whose game is predicated on burst athleticism, and yeah. uh, uh, I, I worry about the longevity of that. But, you know, 
I guess in everything in this very disposable world, we just enjoy what we have now and worry yeah. about the consequences later. Uh, and certainly the Derrick Rose comparison is apt. Um, probably too apt. Sadly apt. I mean, yeah. how, how many different ways can I phrase it? The Derrick Rose thing uh, is is still a bit traumatizing for any lifelong Chicago I'm, Bulls fan. And even if you're not a Bulls fan, I mean, I mean, yeah. for 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 any basketball fan, I remember watching him thinking this is the next great thing, and then that in, those injuries were just awful. Uh, speaking of 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 going back a second, talking about gambling, yeah. um, you know, Warriors fans and everyone, you've been hearing about us talking about Prize Picks for months. Oh yeah. Um, have you signed up yet, Dieter? I know you I, have. I, I have I'm signed up, baby. I'm in. Yeah, same. Uh, Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. If you have not checked it out yet, you're missing out. I'm telling you, you're going to love this app for. NBA and mixed spot pickums. The Christmas Day games are going to be off the charts. Actually, that was in the, that was in the past. Update your copy, locked on ad people. Um, and even more fun if you play Price Picks. Well, Price Picks is the best NBA DFS props games on the market. Price Picks offers more NBA props than any other daily fantasy sports prop operator and offers all the superstar players as well as bench players only recording a handful of minutes each game. Price Picks offers any prop you can think of from points, assists, rebounds, threes made, etc. That's where the Draymond Green thing is especially yeah. particular because the, uh, Price Picks is the exact platform where people were pot potentially uh, taking advantage of that. That information um, and prize picks, mixed sport Don't put entries. That on prize picks. <laughs> Sorry, no offense, prize picks. No, you were you were just an innocent bystander in this whole thing. Uh, entries can be made in sixty seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize picks. It's safe and offers fast withdrawals. Go to Prize Picks today and use promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. <laughs> On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. Listen to Locked On Now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch it on the Locked On NBA YouTube channel. Uh, Dieter and I make appearances on that sometimes. Uh, <laughs> great program. You uh, need more <laughs> of this. <laughs> um, you know, and speaking of this, we cover the Warriors. Yeah. Uh, during the post-game press conference last night, uh, Steve Kerr's and Stephen Curry, and maybe more, I tuned out after that and made some brief appearances. I try to ask questions, but when the team loses, they don't really stick around that long. What right. I wanted to ask, and I was wondering if you knew anything about this, is what's going on with Stephen Curry's rotations? And I'm going to delve into the Warriors offense in general in just a moment because there's a legitimate concern there. But Stephen Curry's rotation until this year was always very consistent. For the past seven, eight years, um, you knew he was coming in in the fourth quarter at the halfway point. You knew he was playing the full first and third quarters. Uh, and then this year they started tinkering and and there's no consistency there now we never know when Steph is going to play I don't know if that's getting into Steph's head I don't know if this is a good or bad thing what are your thoughts on that well I know Steph would prefer the rotations as they were right like the the first quarter the third quarter five minutes or so to go in, in the yeah. third and the fourth but you know Steve Kerr I, and I think that this was apt there were times when Steph was you know Let's not forget that Steph Curry is still a very viable MVP candidate. Like, yes, he is. <laughs> he's not playing yes, he is. great by his standards right now. He had a triple double last night. Like, he's yes, he not did. crap. Um, no, so, I'm not I, saying I that. I know you're not saying that, but <laughs> yeah, it yeah. does feel as if that sentiment is leaning towards. I mean, it, shame's on, shame on me for trying to pick up sentiment via Twitter. But um, <laughs> it's... <laughs> It reflects reality, Dieter. Twitter uh, uh, yeah, reality of, of the crazy. <laughs> um, let's. It's gonna it's gonna be wild here for a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody's rotation is in flux right now, and uh, especially too without Draymond Green. And listen, I, even the James Wiseman aspect of things is probably gonna mess up rotations a little bit. Right. Um, we didn't see Gary Payton the second at all in the first quarter uh, of that mm. game last night. Gary Payton II was arguably the second best player on the floor for the Warriors yeah. last night. Yes, he was. Um, I don't actually think it's much of an argument. Um, he was the only other plus player in the game with Clay Thompson. Um, I would uh, I would guess that when it's all said and done, Steph will end up getting that first, that third, end of the second, end of the fourth once again in terms of the rotation. 
but they're trying to figure out how to get Jordan Poole involved. They were trying to figure mm-hmm. out how to get another shooter on the floor with Steph so that they had some damn spacing. Like, they were trying to figure a lot of that stuff out, and that meant that Steph's rotations had to change because if you have this static Steph Curry rotations, they, they didn't have the players capable uh, of fitting in right. And we saw this a little bit at the end of last year, too. Um, so, I... I Is it getting in Steph's head? Perhaps. Maybe it's the quad contusion. Maybe he's just stinking in January, and it's all going to come to a head here in in the short order. I I just look at this team right now, and they're completely at the drawing board. And, you know, the cool part about Steph, and I think the thing that is constantly forgotten because we treat superstars in this league with such deference and reverence, and the latter— the latter is certainly warranted. The former is over the top most of the time this, <laughs> this day and age. Um, he's just a basketball player on a team. And it is un, it is unquestioned that he makes that team go. He is the, the nucleus, the epicenter, all that stuff. But um, he's not above having his rotation changed. And he won't bitch and whine and complain about it either, which right. makes him – a complete asset they'll figure Mm -hmm. out what's best they will figure out what's best and Steph has a a tremendous amount of say in this uh I think that that is another thing that is being overlooked by you know people who are are looking for someone to blame after the Warriors lose a game and have lost three out of their last four um Steph has say Steph has agency in this Steph is just not going to big time the Golden State Warriors coaching staff into making him play the first quarter, the third quarter, and the bottom, yeah, that rotation as is. He's made it clear that he prefers it that way, but he's also a team player, and yeah. he understands the logic behind not having it that way at this juncture. So I would eventually say that he's going to get what he wants because that rotation makes sense. And this rotation stuff that they're doing right now, like I'd like to remind everybody, it's January 12th. I know, like so early, <laughs> the so season, early. The season, if the Warriors do what they're supposed to do at this juncture, and by the way, don't forget that at the beginning of the season, supposed to was not including games in June. Um, yeah, but if they no, do right. what they're supposed to do, they'll be playing six months from now, six yeah. months from today. I, I agree with you. I, just, I mean, just, I still just, just just pull the horses up a little bit. Call you know, calm your asses. Well, here's here's where I'm gonna share this uh, screen uh, uh, for the YouTube viewers to see, and uh, for those listening, I'll obviously verbalize everything here. Um, so this is from uh, I don't know who Joe Veray is, but his no, Twitter Joe account has is... been doing a really wonderful job for Golden State of Mind. If you don't follow him, Joe Veray NBA, he, he's a really good follow. Um, he, he he's done a wonderful job. I believe he's out of the Philippines. Uh, which is... uh, yeah, exactly. It's it's yeah. it is fascinating. Uh, I, I see him every once in a while on Twitter, um, and he posted this uh, I think this morning or last night, uh-huh. and this is the Warriors' offensive rating versus from their t- first twenty games versus the last twenty games. I didn't realize we're at the forty game mark now. Um, and, and in their first 20 games, they were second in the NBA in terms of os- offensive rating. Their last 20 games, uh, they're 26th. Um, and he's impl- implicating that the Warriors offense has basically reverted back to their 2020, 2021 levels. Uh, yeah. And then if you if you look down a little further on the same screen, and I don't know if this person replying stats are accurate, actually, <laughs> uh, but actually he engages with me a lot, but he said Steph's shooting percentages correlate with the overall mm-hmm. offensive woes of the team where in Steph's first 20 games uh, he was shooting 46 percent from the field 42 percent from three the last 20 games that's dropped to 38 percent from the field which is not very good 34 percent from three which is by his standards a uh, very pedestrian yeah. um and and I, and I guess I'm and I'd love to get your insights on this I, I have some opinions opinions of my well, own share, on this share, as well but share yours. why I, do you I think that we align I think we align on this what do you what do well, you think is the culprit well, I, I, I actually, when it comes to Steph, I don't know. Uh, when it comes to Steph, and this is a question I'm wanting to ask him, I hopefully I'll get a chance to at some point, in that traditionally, throughout his entire career, December, January, his numbers go down. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I don't know if it's just general apathy when in terms of looking at the the – the long-term picture and understanding that that February, March, April is just that much more important. And maybe you should rest mentally and physically and not exert yourself the same amount. 
Um, maybe it's just a random occurrence. Uh, I don't know, in all honesty, um, in terms of Steph. In terms of the offense in general, I think other teams are just starting to figure it out a little more. Draymond Green talks about about this a lot in terms of the on off the ball defense on Steph mm-hmm. and how teams are really squaring down on him and focusing so much on him. And this is where mm-hmm. players like Jordan Poole and Wiggins Otto Porter Jr., mm-hmm. Bielitz's numbers have mm-hmm. dropped a little bit. Uh, they need to step it up. This is mm-hmm. the time. And this is where I think Clay Thompson's return is vitally important. Yeah, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on all this? I mean, what do you think? Agree, agree with that latter point wholeheartedly. Um, let's also not forget the last 20 games or so. That's when the COVID stuff started with this team. Oh, and they were without a significant look at you. number look at of you. players. Um, you think 20 games or so, and you go, man, that must be forever. Nah, it was like no. middle of December. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, uh, it, it, I mean, yeah, they've played a lot of games as of late. Uh, you know, they have, they've had a lot of COVID stuff. They are uh, yeah. apparently on the back end of that. They were playing, you know, you remember the game in Phoenix? Like, they, <laughs> they didn't have any dudes. Andrew Wiggins wasn't there. There was a stretch yeah. when Andrew Wiggins was – was carrying the load. Uh, there was a stretch where Jordan Poole looked spectacular. Those two guys are the culprits right now. Uh, Steph, yeah. Steph needs to play better. There's no there's no two ways about that. He needs to play better. In particular, he needs to be more efficient in how he yeah. gets his points. Full stop. I mean, there's no, there's no deeper analysis necessary. I agree with Bud. It's amazing that there's that many Buds considering the number of numbers <laughs> behind Bud's name. But um, – I agree with Bud two thousand fourteen hundred and five there with uh, yeah. with him. It, it, Steph's Steph's percentages correlate with the Warriors' down to, uh, uh, offensive downturn. I also think that the rotations have been a hot mess for a while now because yeah. of COVID, because of injury, because of a lot of things. Uh, you have that, and now yeah, I the, the off court for Steph minutes haven't been awesome. I think we can attribute that to Poole. Uh, Wiggins has not really been the anchor of the second unit for a minute now. Um, you know, uh, Otto Porter has been thrust into a larger role. They've been there's a lot of stuff to figure out with this team. I don't think it's permanent. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as great as it was at the beginning of the season when the Warriors were just blitzing teams because hey, yeah. you know teams get smart, teams get wise, and uh, teams don't want to get embarrassed. The Warriors are now a team with a target on their back Yes, uh, once again. And what's going to happen in that environment is teams are actually going to defensively game plan for the Golden State Warriors. I, I know yeah. that this is a kind of a novel concept, and I know that I'm perhaps underselling it a bit. But, like, NBA teams don't really do much game planning for regular season <laughs> games. No. Like, they really don't. So a game plan is typically as simple as just double-team that guy and we'll figure it out on the back end. Just rotate and double team that guy. You know, here are our fundamentals. We're going to run, you know, these four or five plays. Uh, there's really nothing. You know, shoot around is not some intense, uh, you know, X's and O's no. strategy. Practices are a, a little, you know, practices matter. Uh, practices, you kind of install, you know, 10, 15 things that maybe or work on them from training camp that you say, hey, we're probably going to have to do this coming up. Uh, you know, there are some conversations about rotations and matchups that you want, but really it's just, go out there and we'll see who's the best in the regular season. This isn't like a seven game series when you can get Andrew Bogan on Tony Allen. So um, <laughs> I, I just, I get, it's a hundred percent accurate. The offense has been doo doo as of, yeah. Um, I yeah, think that there's about a this. Mul- multitude of reasons behind it. And ultimately until we see the Warriors understanding that nothing will ever be perfect, but until we see the Warriors, big three play together i i just i i don't know how we can expect anything of you know serious merit from this team because it, yeah. or, or anything indicative of maybe their their overarching possibilities because again th- those are the three who are going to carry it for them and it'd be nice if four five and six and i'll include andre guadala in this um mm-hmm. It'd be nice if four, five, and six, which is Poole, Wiggins, and Iguodala, could get in on the action a little bit more often too. Uh, the, those those three in particular have been lackluster in my estimation over those last twenty games. And you're absolutely you don't right. have Clay, and Draymond's not a scorer, and Steph's not shooting well, and no one's picking up the slack. This is what happens. I mean, I, 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 what what were the two numbers there, by the way? So it's an offensive rating, so that's points per one hundred possessions. Those two numbers were what, like one thirteen versus one oh eight? Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. 
huge difference there, right? Yeah, <laughs> five, a whole five. And when we yeah. come back, we'll de- we'll definitely uh, 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 finish up. We'll, we'll preview what's to come uh, and, and talk a little bit more about the Warriors' struggles and, and whether or not it is a real concern. But one thing that could comfort Warriors fans during this somewhat malaise that the team is in <laughs> is Bill Barr. Yeah. <laughs> it's the new year. So that means New Year's resolutions. It's about getting fit, maybe getting healthier. Are you still sticking with your New Year's, New Year's resolutions, uh, Dieter, or, or is it I'm already a, over yet? I'm not a resolution man, but oh, that's um, right, that's right. But you did say you were kind of uh, trying something, right? Being healthy. Yeah. I can't remember. Okay, I might have had a couple of Coors Lights, so I might have messed up. That <laughs> I like Coors Lights, especially if it's cold in a bottle. I'm, I'm all mm-hmm. for it. Uh, or actually, it can. Or even it can. Uh, okay. Make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. It might taste great with a Coors Light. I don't know. But it, but Built Bar does make it easy to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good that you'll want to eat it. Unlike pro- other protein bars, which can be chalky, waxy, taste like yeah. a chemical spill. Ugh. Right? Yeah. So you want to eat healthy, but you don't want to get bored doing so. Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, so you get that sweet tooth fix in only 130 calories, only 4 grams of sugar versus close to 30 grams for your typical candy bar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. So here's an idea for the new year. Go to all your secret treat stashes, whether it's at home, in the pantry, at the office, in the car, wherever it is, throw out all the sugary or calorie-filled treats and replace them with Built Bar. So when you're craving a snack or treat, you can reach for something that's healthy and tastes incredible. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. Again, that's a, that's LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And speaking of those Draymond Green bets, I wonder if BetOnline.ag was taking those bets and if they'll actually let you cash out if you did. They are, they are the most reputable source in, in online gaming, so um, I, you know they'll probably be cool about it. Totally. BetOnline would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. BetOnline remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. And I'm sure they were stoked taking everyone's money from that uh, a college football championship game. Yep. All those people betting that money line in Alabama. It did look like such a great bet. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on for that 50% welcome bonus from football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. <laughs> On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. And Dieter, I just want to bounce off what you're saying. Uh, for any Warriors fans that are concerned right now, I I am not concerned. I, I honestly believe that I feel like the narrative is the same every year. For some reason, the Warriors, at least during their golden run, they had these periods where you kind of get concerned and, you know, you have the media yeah. starting to focus on the negatives. And then March, April comes around and we forget all about everything that's happened. My prediction, I could be wrong, is that come yeah. March, April, Stephen Curry is going to be the leader in terms of the MVP voting again. Um, and he will win his third MVP. It's still early, but yeah, we'll see I think he'll turn it around. I, mean, I think he'll turn it around. I don't know if he'll be the leader in the clubhouse for MVP. I think Giannis is going to have something to say about that. I think he's yeah. just playing out of his court. I think it's going to be a hell of an MVP race, and that it might be the tightest that we've seen between four or five guys, which is awesome. So it, maybe he yeah. is. Maybe he isn't. Uh, I do think yeah. he'll be part of that conversation for sure. And I think the Warriors are going to be part of the conversation as, as a title favorite. Um, Agreed. Let's also not forget, you know, okay, they're on this four-game road trip right now. And it is it is a hellcat, man. This sucks, like full stop. Um, <laughs> especially is. given the circumstances, they have a seven game home home stand right afterwards. Like, oh, read that gonna, schedule. Make people happy. Detroit, Indiana, oh, Houston, oh, Utah, mm, who I don't like but would love to beat. Dallas, and they beat them. And uh-huh. they beat them. Oh, Minnesota, Brooklyn. I mean, 
there's one easy week and, and one interesting, challenging week. I think that if we're at that Utah game, if we're at that Brooklyn game, and the Warriors still look like trash by their standards, well, we can have a conversation then. Yes. And even then, it's probably too early. But at that point, we gave them a little bit of leeway. I mean, <laughs> two weeks is a little bit of leeway. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> Talk to me after the All Star game. I mean, it, there, it's just it, it's such a long season. The Warriors don't have anything to prove. Like there was something to, maybe it was a negative, but there was something to the Christmas Day game in Phoenix. There was something to beating Utah in Utah. Yes, that they just convinced themselves, and and they should have convinced anyone watching because they're certainly bought in on it. That oh yeah, we're we're the best team. Absolutely, and, and <laughs> they don't need to prove it to anybody. Right. They're going into every game just saying like. Yeah, we'll probably win. And if we don't, no big deal because we beat Utah on the road and we beat, you know, like uh, this Milwaukee game might be a, 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 a cup check game. Let's see. Let's see what they got in this one, because I do think that now after losing to Memphis and by the way, they could have won that game. Um, it's not as if they got ran. You're they, right. They got ran they, early. They came back. Right. They had leads in the second half. Uh, Memphis did a fantastic job. They made three straight three pointers like good on them. Memphis is a great team. They were in Memphis. Memphis was frothing at the mouth with the potential of beating the Warriors. Right. Um, Milwaukee will not have that same sort of freneticism, right? Milwaukee doesn't have to view itself as the plucky underdog. Like, they view the Warriors as a worthy adversary. In fact, the Warriors should probably feel like an underdog going into that game. Let's see what kind of energy they play. Let's see what kind of you know zeal they have uh on the court in that game because this is a team that i think we have seen throughout this season gets up for the big ones and you're, no, you're absolutely one, right. i don't know if the memphis one was a big one 26 lineups kind of negates the possibility of it being a big one um but you know they're not going to do 26 lineups again against milwaukee uh they have a little bit more you know, clairvoyance now about what does and doesn't work i need more gary payton the second with clay thompson full stop um i you know i need steph to you know <laughs> shoot better i need jordan Poole to actually look like the guy who wants to carry the second unit as a six man like they're gonna be fine i'm interested to see the kind of energy they bring to milwaukee i'm interested to see the kind of energy they bring to chicago they got to bring it to one of the two just to convince me that hey it's going to be okay the tactics the rotations the players themselves that will work out in the long run yeah. they're too talented to suck uh and they don't suck they're too talented to be a middle of the road team they're way better than you know dallas they're way better than denver like th this is not a team that's going to have a bad seat. They're going to have home court advantage through multiple rounds of the playoffs, if not all the playoffs. But I, I would like to see a little bit more energy. I'd like to see a little bit more control. I'd like to just see a little bit more fire out of them. And I know it's hard to do without Draymond Green, but I'm asking them to do it anyway. And let's see what they got. Yeah, and and to me, two vitally important variables for this team, especially when they're in their successful years, is urgency and effort. And uh, like just and they, we just really didn't see that. And that could be a huge right. reason why they were vastly out rebounded. Uh, the Grizzlies, at least until about a minute or two main, remaining in the game, had 18 more shots than the Warriors yes. in that game. And that is where rebounding is important. Mm -hmm. um, and then the turnovers were, were, were atrocious. They were turning the ball over left and right. But you're right. It, it's the Warriors just aren't playing with that same urgency effort that we're accustomed to when they actually care. They rarely lose. Um, right. and, and they get sloppy when they don't care as much. And, and and it's a shame that I don't think they really rose up in that Grizzlies game. But at the same time, Draymond is their emotional leader. That it's could nice be a huge reason back. why. They, they could have packed it in, to be fair. I mean, given the yeah. way it was going, they could have packed it in. That first half stunk. And by the end, you know, most of the first half stunk. But by the you know going into halftime, it was single digits, right? So Yeah. And um, they, they did a nice job. Listen, it was not a good game. We're not going to give them a good game. No, it wasn't. Like, it wasn't let's not overreact to this they're trying to they got a lot exactly. of stuff that they need to figure out but these are champagne problems compared to everybody else's issues exactly so um and then Dieter you're going to take the helm I believe tomorrow to to wrap up yeah. the week yeah, uh we'll, um, we'll we'll take uh we'll take that Bucks game and we will analyze it to kingdom come <laughs> absolutely and then and then we'll be back next week together to host more shows um thanks for making locked on warriors your first listen every day now make your second listen locked on bets your daily one-stop shop Who's for all host? your gambling what's up is the host my boy q it's our boy q Oh, right. No, we're, Sorry, I forgot that it's a collective. It's our, it's our, yeah, it's we're hanging out with Q. He's our boy, dude. We're partying with boy. him. We're, you know, we're betting is with him. Is there any he's... Lee Sterling action on that podcast? There is. And there's Lee Sterling. Good he's the know. one that brings the expert analysis and insight is oh. Lee Sterling. How, how and else could of... we get away with it? <laughs> and that show is locked on bets. It's free and available 
on all platforms. You can follow again Dieter Kurdenbach on Twitter at Dieter. Oh, if you're watching on YouTube, there's Moose. Moose, Moose makes his appearance. Moose was here for the entire podcast and just decided at the very end, I'm out of here. Oh. And now he's going to mess up some wiring, so we better say goodbye. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Oh, I'm so glad Moose made an appearance. So that's why you should watch on YouTube, or, but this podcast is obviously amazing as well. Thanks, everyone. We'll uh, talk to you soon.